Hi, I'm Lee Partridge and welcome back to Colu TV for another midweek show. On the show this evening, we've got reaction and action from Forest Green game from last night. We've also got interviews from our two latest additions to the squad, Tom Dallison and Corey Andrews, who signed last week. They was uh, ready to be involved at the Rochdale game. Obviously, as you're well aware, that game didn't happen due to the conditions. We've got, I'll tell you what, let's start with the full interview about that game from the referee and what he had to say, Craig Hicks. I'm joined with uh, today's match official match referee, Craig Hicks. Craig, thank you so much for joining us. I understand that it must be a pain last minute for all parties. I wonder if you could just give us an explanation on the process of how the game gets called off and why it's been called off so late today. Yeah, no worries. Um, it's a very difficult decision. So on arrival this afternoon at uh, quarter to one, I uh, went and inspected the field of play as we normally do. And I was quite concerned about a few areas of the field of play that had a lot of surface water on them. Um, spoke to obviously both clubs and we agreed that there'll be a inspection, official inspection at two o'clock. Um, went back out at two o'clock. There was signs of improvement, but still had a lot of surface water on the field of play. Areas of concern were over the far side as you come out of the tunnel mm -hmm. and then the near side by the tunnel area as well. Obviously, we've got to take into consideration player safety. That's obviously paramount. And also in terms of the game itself, we don't want it to become a farce if obviously we, sure. we, 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 we play, etc. Um, felt that we could maybe delay um, the inspection to maybe delay the kickoff to give it every chance because everyone here today wanted to play the game of football. Um, and then we obviously inspected at half past two and the ground staff have done an incredible job. However, it just was not safe to start and finish that game of football sure. this afternoon. So kind of that's the process behind it. Of course, and and we saw you having a conversation with both managers on the pitch shortly just before it was called off. Is that more of an explanation of why it's going to be called off, or was it this was was the decision ever in the hands of no? The so it, both 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 um, uh, Hayden and Robbie um, were involved in the process mm -hmm. right from the start, and again, I was speaking to them throughout the whole afternoon with regards to kind of their um, their thoughts with regards to yeah. it. So they were in agreement that that game was. It was going to be called off sure. um, because of health and safety reasons. And, and we we saw you spend a lot of time in the goal mouths of each. Obviously, that's an area where it's always crowded at corners, etc. And there was a lot of dropping the ball, etc. And that just obviously wasn't up to wasn't up to the standards. Play, 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 like play safety, yeah, okay. play safety. I mean, like I said, it was a numerous areas of that field of play today, which was not safe um, sure. for a game of football. And as I say, play safety is sure. paramount, and that's why the game was called off today. And, and is there a deadline? I know you said you meant you wanted to delay the kickoff. Do you think had we have had, uh, I'm, I'm unsure if there's a deadline at all, I, we have to kick off by a certain time. But with, with the forecast being how it was, is there, there's obviously no opportunity for, we'll delay it three hours, that just gets a bit silly. Yeah, no, it? we gave it every chance today by potentially delaying the kickoff. But yeah, we've got to take into consideration, obviously, preparation for the players, etc. So we, we gave it every chance today, but unfortunately... Okay. There was no game today. Perfect. Thank you for your explanation. Much appreciated, Craig, uh, for, for speaking to us. No problem. And uh, we look forward to the rearranged game versus Rochdale. There you go. Uh, Craig Hicks's reasonings for the game against Rochdale being called off. Make of that what you will. And of course, very frustrating for all the fans that made it here to the stadium for the game, both home and away fans. Extremely, extremely frustrating to say the least. Uh, Robbie Cowlin has given an update on a few things Colu related this week, including the fact that the U's are going to be, we're going to be working hard in the transfer window and we will be hearing from a couple of the permanents shortly and also the ticketing system and hopefully that will be back to normal next season. Robbie will be on BBC Radio Essex tomorrow evening from 6pm answering your questions so make sure you tune in and get in touch uh, if you've got something you would like to air. Let's get back to a couple of the permanents that we've just signed. Uh, Cameron Cox and also Tom Dallison. Tom, signed for Colchester United. How did the news come about that they were interested and how quickly has it happened? Uh, yeah, it happened really quickly. Um, sort of in the last 48 hours. Um, I, yeah, really pleased to, to get it over the line and everything went really smoothly. So glad to be here and, and get everything to it. Yeah, and obviously you've had a training session already and uh, how's it been getting to know all the lads? Did you know any of them? Uh, no, but they're, they're a friendly group. Met, met the boys this morning, uh, training this morning. So, yeah, I um, won't take too long to, to settle in with the squad. They're, they're a good group of lads. And obviously, all players look at the table, especially if you're coming to a new club, you know that there's a lot of work to be done in the second half of the season here. There is, but I mean, playing against um, a side this, this season twice already, you can see there's, there's huge potential in the squad. I think it's a great squad to come into. 
um, good depth competition for places. Um, yeah, so uh, there, there's big potential. Really. I think it's fire margins like, like football can be. Yeah, and obviously you yourself, you'll be wanting a really good second half to the season for the first time for a, for a few seasons. Cause obviously we had COVID mm-hmm. that killed off one and then you had injury last season. Yeah, I mean, the COVID period doesn't help to anyone. But I mean, uh, yeah, if I can come in and, and help the squad push on in, in any way I can, then yeah, that's what I've come to do, just to, to help push the club in the right direction. And like you say, you played against Colchester a, a few times, so you know what they're about and you also know what the league's about. Yeah, played against the Colchester a few times now, so always enjoy playing at the stadium as well. Um, you know, played against being on either end, so... I've, uh, I've witnessed the fans how, how good they can be when they get behind the team. So yeah, really, really looking forward to to playing for the for, yeah. for the team. And obviously, that, that injury came against Colchester, so uh, hopefully, there's no hard feelings on that score. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. Part and parcel. Yeah. And, and like you say, the second half of the season is going to be tough, but it's a case of everyone pulling together and uh, you know everyone getting in, kind of integrated into new squads uh, as quickly as possible. Yeah, see, I mean, there's some. Some senior players in the squad, or some senior players. There's a, there's a good group of senior players in the group that will uh, that will guide the younger players through, and, and the less experienced. So I think there's a good balance. Um, I think the, the, the team, the club's been really ambitious, and they're, they're, they've got the right guidance at the moment. So yeah, as I said again, it's, it's fine margins. Um, but yeah, I mean the club's pushing them in the right direction. I think. Yeah, and you yourself, over like the last two or three seasons, you've played quite a lot of games in regular when you, you've been fit. So uh, how hard was it to leave Crawley and come to Coast United? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Crawley, Crawley is, is, is no, it's nothing to hide. Like it's, it's a, it's a club I made my league debut. At. I've got a uh, affinity with a club, um, but yeah, it's almost um, fell into place for me here. Really, um, it's, it's a, as soon as I heard the interest, I was, I was keen on coming. Um, so you come in, you look at the, the facilities, the stadium. Um, the manager, the owner, the ambition the club's got is uh, is someone I couldn't turn down. Cam, loan period been made into a permanent deal. You must be pleased that your immediate future is sorted out now. Yeah, of course. Um, I've put a lot of hard work into the last couple of months to to get this deal, and I'm just very pleased that I've got it at such a such a great club. Yeah, and do do you feel that pressure? Do you feel that pressure of knowing that you have got to perform? You know, to, to make things happen, or is that just how footballers have to play all yeah, the time? Um, no, I think that obviously when I came here on loan in January, then I knew that I had to had to work hard to, to get the deal that I wanted, which has just happened. But on the pitch, you just you just go out and play and, and do what you can and, and do what you can for the club to get them to where they are. Yeah, and obviously on a personal basis, you've played a lot, you've been involved in the squad a lot. Yeah. I presume that's all you can do and all you want to be doing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, since coming here then, I've played played quite a bit of games and been involved in the squad, but I, that I didn't really expect first coming here. So it's been pleasing for me that the gaffers um, trusted me and and gave me the opportunity to do what I can do. Obviously, on a team basis, first half of the season hasn't gone as well as we would have wanted yeah. it to. Is there a determination now to, to make sure that we get away from those? Uh, yeah, yeah, places? of course. Um, I know the first half of the season hasn't gone as planned, but we are trying, we are working hard day day in, day out to, to get us out of this little struggle that we're in. And I know that we can do with the players we have around the changing room and in the club. We will we will get out of it. Yeah, and, and obviously, the last few weeks have been difficult with not knowing if games are on or yeah. off, and then you're preparing for a game, and then it's called off. How difficult has that been from a changing room point of view? Well, it's it's part and parcel of life at the minute, isn't it? With with COVID, that it's you're in uncertain times and you don't know what's going to happen. But we plan as if the game's going to go ahead, and that's the best we can do. If it's called off, there's nothing we can do about that. But we do plan as if the game's going to go ahead, and and we're ready for it. Yeah, and obviously coming to the club on loan, wanting this permanent deal. Now you've got it, I suppose. Is there a different set of ambitions, or is it still the case of just wanting to play as many games as possible? It's just it's just a case of playing as many games as possible and doing what I can for the team. Um, obviously, I'm I'm over the moon with with the contract, and I just want to want to keep pushing myself and and doing as best as I can. 
Cameron and Tom there speaking about us hopefully moving up the table and uh, let's hope that starts on Saturday, of course. It was a busy week on the recruitment front with those two and Corey's loan deal all happening in the same couple of days. Corey's switch from AFC Wimbledon was announced on Saturday. He's had a loan spell at Aldershot this season where he scored 9 in 20. So let's hope for some more of that for us. Uh, he looked sharp and ready to settle in last night and this is what he had to say. Corey, joined Colts United on loan. You know, how did the news come about and how did you learn of Colts' interest? Um, well, uh, Wimbledon contacted me and told me that um, Colts had inquired about me. And when it came up, I was literally buzzing that and I wanted to jump at the chance because I just want to keep playing football and I want to prove everyone what I can do. And obviously you've been doing that in the first half of the season at Aldershot. Yeah. You know, uh, scored a few goals as well. Presume you'll be wanting to just carry on doing that here at Colsa? Yeah, I just want to carry on my good form that I've had at Aldershot at the start of the season. And I just want to just help the team as possible, as much as possible. Yeah. And I suppose, you know, you, you've been at a League One club, but you've been on, on loan at a National League club, so it'd be a case of you having to get used to and getting to know League Two as well. Yeah, it's, it's new to me as well. So playing at the National League, it was tough, to be fair, it's a good level, man. I presume that League 2 is going to be even harder, but as long as I work hard and I do the right things every day, I'm sure I'll be good. And yeah. Obviously, you, you probably looked at the position Colts United are in, and I suppose you want to just kind of be part of a squad that helps uh, uh, get us away from those bottom places in the league. Yeah, definitely. I think, I think the team is good enough. I've seen the squad. I've got some very good players in the team, and I believe that we'll push on the second half of the season. Yeah, and all players we talk to say about how hard sometimes it is to come into a new club and meet yeah. all the new teammates in the chain room. Is there anyone you know at Colchester or will you um, be coming in fresh? No, I'm coming in fresh, but I know quite a few of the players. Uh, I'm very familiar. I've seen them play in League 2, League 1 as well, so yeah. And I suppose you're in here on a Friday morning yeah. wanting to get out for training, but I suppose you want to be involved straight away in the yeah, game definitely. tomorrow. I just want to get going straight away. I'm buzzing. I'm looking forward to it. That's uh, been the second half of the season here. Corey there, talking about scoring goals for us. And of course, let's hope that he does. And we welcome all the new signings to the club. As we mentioned, we was at Forest Green last night and a couple of milestones for a couple of the players. Luke Chambers making his 800th senior appearance and Charlie Daniels a milestone of 500th career appearance. is incredible for both those players. Let's take a look at the action and then what Luke Chambers had to say after the game. Oh, 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 oh,
one. Well, Luke, 800 games, and you're still in one piece. Yeah, just about. Uh, tough game tonight. Tough battle with the lad who's in form. He's obviously they've come out winners, so we're, we're we're pretty gutted. Yeah, it's not about my my appearance record and stuff. But obviously, it's a nice moment for me, but I've come off on the losing side. Forget about tonight's game. Let's go on to your appearances. 800 is, is an amazing achievement. Do you keep a record of that, or does somebody tell you a week or two ago? Do you realise you're almost up to 800? Yeah, there's more. Yeah, there's more of that than me sort of keeping a record. I know I hit 750 last year, and I'm still still feeling very fit and strong, and I'm enjoying playing. So yeah, that's another milestone. And then you start to look at records and how many people have played more than that. And I think it's that are, that are finished playing now. I think there's only six, five or six people more appearances in the Football League and so it's, uh, yeah, something I can be very, very proud of but at the minute we're just trying to get out of the mess we're in. Well, you're maybe in a mess but go back to tonight's game. You played pretty well, not only yourself as an individual but the whole team and you must be a little disappointed that after putting in such a, a shift and such an effort you went down 2-0. Let's forget the second goal yeah. to a degree. It was a slip right at the end. You're chasing the game. You created enough to score. Yeah, I think that's a bit been the story for our seasons probably from start to finish at the moment um, we're creating chances this isn't, this isn't me putting blame on anyone but we have to take our chances whether that be myself defenders from set pieces anyone midfielders strikers we have to take our chances we're creating chances we're getting ourselves in good positions and goals change games it's, just, it's a common saying that everyone shocks around all the time but it couldn't be any more simpler yeah, exactly, every player in the team needs to score at some stage. Defensively, maybe a little slip tonight, conceded that first goal. Uh, the manager wasn't overly happy with that, but no, you, you can't. I took it well. Yeah, it, listen, I think I think I tackled it onto him, and it's just gone in. So, uh, but it comes from our lack of um, organisation from a set piece, second, third phase. We don't get ourselves into shape quick enough. We turn, we allow the ball to come inside us. Their lads on the run. That's the strength of their team. They get the ball wide and cross it. So. At the end of the day, if you're not doing your job. So do you look at each other or do you point fingers or do you say, come on guys, we've got to get out of this, we're better than this? Oh, it's easy to point fingers. That's the easy part of football and people can blame whoever they like. We're in a blame culture in society nowadays. So, But no, it's our, it's our job to keep a clean sheet together. It's our job to score together. It's our job to get ourselves out of the mess we're in. Um, I do believe there's plenty enough in there. We just need to score chances when they come our way and keep them out it's pretty simple what we need what we need to do not switch off at key moments in games and allow teams to have the upper hand well good luck with that game 801 and for the rest of the season Luke well done um, a decent performance uh, against a Forest Green Rovers that are sitting top of the league and only lost two league games all season so that was always going to be a very very difficult fixture for us but I think we can take some positives out of that game at least. I made the trip down there myself as well on a wet old journey down. It did clear up for the game uh, and a big special a shout out and mention to the other 86 youth fans that made the journey down there and of course the long journey home. Stuart Smith from BBC Radio Essex caught up with Hayden Mullins after the game and this is what he had to say. Well Hayden, I would say Pretty good performance from Colchester United. You must have been very, very pleased with that. Scoreline was a bit tough to take. Uh, yeah, listen, the, the scoreline at the end, obviously the goal we give away, um, in which we can see we, we're chasing the game, some mistake is a slip from, from our player, and listen, we don't blame him for that at one point. I think, uh, I think, like you said, to come here, they're a good side, they run hard, they compete, um, they're you know, strong in what they're doing, uh, a good unit. Um, moment of sloppiness from us to concede the first goal. We switch off in that wide area, they're getting behind us. And, and what's not going for us at the moment is the, the deflected goal, which bobbles in. I think um, from us to, to concede that early and then um, play the way we did was, was, was pleasing as a head coach. I think, again, we create chances, create chances and good ones, you know, we get some really, really good areas. And I thought the one from Luke Hannon right at the end was was going to go in for us but it didn't um, and then we make a slip up at one end and it ends 2-0 but uh, for large periods um, to come here a team top of the league and, and play the way we did and, and, and really force them back you know pin them back at times at their home where they're really really strong was, was good pleasing to see very disciplined uh, at the back some good defending plenty of bodies in the box we needed you say that one slip making the, the main difference but the group really got back going again and got very much into the game and created enough opportunities to break through but 
forced the goalkeeper in a save, just couldn't quite get past it. Yeah, a few saves. I think Corey looked bright up top and he, uh, he helped at times in terms of getting us up the pitch and he really wanted to try and get himself a goal. I think uh, I think we need to keep feeding feeding him and, and, um, and playing in the right areas. And, and we've got to be ruthless in front of goal. We've got to take one of these chances and uh, give us a foothold in games. But like I said, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a performance in the second half. We got the reaction from the players we wanted, um, front-footed. Um, some really good play at times, moved the ball really well, created the chances, like I say, but we've we got to start taking them. So Corey Andrews made his debut tonight, uh, didn't get off the, off the score and shoot, but uh, does look lively and he was defending as well as attacking, wasn't he? It's good when you lose possession, he'll go and try and get it back for you. Yeah, he's a strong boy, he's different to Freddie in terms of uh, Freddie's movements, really clever. He wants to get him behind defenders, he's more like a, a, a fly which is buzzing around you, Freddie is a. Uh, Corey's a bit more stronger, a bit more powerful, a bit more straight line running. Um, so the two of them, if they, they are put together, will, uh, will hopefully work well and, and cause defences problems. But um, yeah, he works well. He, he, he um, give everything to them. I think all the players do. Did anybody in particular stand out for you? For me, um, today, I thought the, the group as a whole, I think I thought they were good. I think everything we asked of them, they did. Um, like I say, two moments, two, two laps moments from us, one in a wide area where we switched off, didn't go with a runner. Um, and double C has slipped right at the end and we're getting punished at the moment and that's that's the way it is. But, you know, the, the one thing I would say to the boys and, and to stay positive with is that um, we should have a run of home games coming up, which should be ones that we're looking forward to. We, we do a lot of travelling on the road and uh, this group of that come up today has been a long day. No excuses, but um, we'll have some home games coming up, which will be good because we haven't played at home since November. And if you play that well against the leaders away from home, really, it does give encouragement for those home games coming up. Yeah, no, most definitely. I think um, that's the one thing about the group is, is to let them know where we went wrong. Let them know that we are disappointed. But let them know there's some there's some positives and big positives to take from from what we did today. And, uh, there's loads of bits to build. Thanks, mate. Cheers. So on to Saturday and the Barra game, a big game for us, of course, here at the JobServe Community Stadium. If you haven't already got your tickets, please do go to colutickets.com. And also the Sutton game, the rearranged Sutton game tickets uh, are available and go to the website for all the details. And just to clear up that the Sutton game won't be available on iFollow. And this is Sutton United's decision not to stream the game, not to show the game live. It's nothing to do with Colchester United. This is solely a Sutton uh, decision, just to clear that up. Uh, if you do want to contact us here for anything, whether you want a message on the big screen or a birthday message on there, or even here on the show, it's media at colchesterunited.net. We'll be back. Well, actually, Harry will be back in the hot seat, 2.30 for the pre-match show on Saturday before the Barrow game. I'll be back next week for the midweek show. So until then, have a fantastic week, weekend, and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye for now.